Okay, so it's Scott's fish cave or man cave. Yeah, outside in the shed. Um, the shed is kind of hooked to the house. I've got PVC pipes that run through the wall here um, into the house that have um, electricity run, uh, cables that are hooked to my apex, for example, to network this, um, water lines going to the house for my automatic water change and for top off. Um, so anyhow, we got to set up our EB8 and our P1. So next step is start mounting this thing up. Uh, kind of mark some holes here where I want it. How are you determining where you want it? Eh, away from the RODI filter, so I do not want it near any source of water. Good point. So that, that is a key priority. And this is the power bar we're uh, mounting? Yes, power bar, and then I'll mount up the PM1, the probe module. Oh, you know what? I probably didn't even turn it on. All right. And this is what? The PM1 module. I'm going to route my wires here away from the uh, power bar just so we don't get any interference there. Now, this is where the probe is going to connect. That's correct. So, you have a probe with a long cable on it? Long enough to reach the CO2 or reach the reactor. Oh, that's right. So all that's in. That'll all be right here. All that's in here in this room, in the uh, Scott Fish Room. Exactly. All right, so we got them all mounted up. Next setup or next uh, task is to plug this stuff in. Actually, we'll plug our power bar first. These are the USB looking cables, the Aquabus cables. And we've got another one of these power bars here, so we'll plug this into the, you can't see it back there, but There, or plug in there. This. All right. Now we'll connect this in into our apex, and then plug our PM1 into here. So in a moment, first thing I want to do is give this thing power. Should have a green status light there in a moment. Green. Our PM1. All right. Those are now on my Apex network. The next thing we're going to do is start bringing. Okay, so so just so I understand, the uh, that's the um, energy bar, the four outlet energy bar. And its power source came from something over here? Yeah, I ran a uh, extension cord through the wall. I had to cut the end off um, and then put a new connector on the extension cord. But I ran an extension cord into a dedicated circuit that I have An extension house. cord from where to where? Uh, on the other side of this wall, inside the house, 
is another closet where I've got most of the power for my fish tank coming in as well as the rest of my eight Neptune equipment so um, or in that area so this extension cord goes into the house through this PVC pipe and plugs into a wall outlet in a closet on the other side. So that's just a power supply cord right there? That's correct. And that comes out and goes where? Goes to our EV8 to supply power to it. EV8, so is that an out, eight outlet energy bar? Okay, I see, there it is over there. Okay, so you daisy chained off the eight outlet power wise to supply power to the four outlet energy bar? No. I have a separate power source for this EB-8. I could have run it off of there, but I chose not to. Instead, I ran an extension cord through the wall, through that PVC Okay, pipe. so this, this energy bar has its own power That's source. That's correct. It has its All own right, power so you source. Alright, so you brought power out here for... The second uh, one. Oh, okay, for the second one, which happens to be that one there. So that's got its own power it's got supply. its own power, but the... Now, how does that... Our Aquabus cable here... Uh-huh. This plugs into a port on here, an Aquabus port, that basically daisy chains it. So the same way this uh -huh. panel one is connected here, we've got the Aquabus port between the two bars. So any information or data gathered by that power bar is now shared into this outlet, this eight outlet power bar over here. Except it's not really data. All it does is get signals to turn on. Signals, on. okay. Except it does have the little aquabus. And this eight outlet over here is somehow connected to the apex itself. Yep, through uh -huh. one of these cables. All right, and that PMI over there that's yeah. going to get the PM1, that's going to get the signal off the probe, is then sent into the four outlet energy bar, which has its own power supply, but via an Aquabus uh, shares information into that um, energy bar, which in turn sends it into the apex inside the house. Exactly. Wow. All right, so next step is gonna be to uh, run pipe, or run tubing. All right, so it's time to start running our tubing. Um, made a point of marking one tube, because um, we're gonna need to know which is which when we plug in the pump, so. One was going to be used, obviously, to suck water out, and the other one will be returning water. So in here, I've got a pipe there that I'm going to run it through. That'll lead me right into my closet on the other side. Geo's Reef, the fabricator of the world-famous Geo Calcium Reactor line, has released a new dual-chamber reactor. The CR612X2 is designed for hobbyists concerned with low effluent pH. Geo reactors utilize the bottom-up water flow method to capture free CO2 and draw it back into the circulation pump. This design consumes less gas in the reaction chamber and less gas in the effluent. Not sure which reactor is best for you? GEO provides several different models. GEO reactors are fabricated in the USA. Check out geosreef.com today. At some point, there comes a time in everyone's professional career where they must move forward. They must embrace that next leap of technology. I've been building and maintaining aquariums for 31 years, and I've always shied away from the latest gadgets, the newest lights, those high-tech fancy controller systems. I didn't get on board initially because I knew they were not long-term field tested. But even later, I still avoided these controllers and monitors because they seemed overly complex, and no surprise, I'm the furthest thing from a techie kind of guy. After now being introduced to the Apex system by Scott, I realized that 2016 was the year for me to have my electric moment. So what changed? Neptune Systems has been creating aquarium monitoring and controlling systems for nearly 18 years. So they've been around for a long time. But over the last few years, they snuck up on me 
and created a system to monitor your aquarium from anywhere in the world and control all the devices without having to be an electrical engineer. Okay, so you've got my attention now. The system is called Apex and the cloud-based software it comes with is called Apex Fusion. Apex Fusion is the recent improvement that has made it so super simple. Using the step-by-step -step Get Started Guide, the Apex was easy to install and get connected up to their Apex Fusion cloud-based control. In only a matter of minutes, I got the basics going and could monitor all the tank's vital signs. Temperature, pH, ORP, salinity, water levels, leaks, and tons more from anywhere in the world. It'll even send me text messages. That 24-7 monitoring is key because it's the insurance policy against the top failures that will destroy not only your livestock, but your ultimate enjoyment of the aquarium hobby as well. If that alone was not enough, the Apex is the Swiss Army knife for your tank. It can control many different aspects of the aquarium that often require many discrete pieces of equipment. This can save tons of money, from pump control, to dawn to dusk dimming of lights, to dosing control. It does it all. My revelation for 2016? I think the Apex is a key component of a successful aquarium. And remember, if I say it's easy to set up and use, that says it all. All right, so we're back. Um, tubes that we ran through the wall are right here. Come out through the pipe there. The next step to do is to route them into the tank. Um, it's gonna have to go through the wall, so I grabbed a hanger, got a piece of tape there. That'll help me feed it through the wall. Uh, first step, let's get that thing up here. Tubes. Alright, so we got that. There, now we just wrap this thing together. I have a feeling I probably ought to be using electric tape here. Yeah, that blue masking tape may not hold real well, but it we was handy. Started. Alright, now feed this to a hole. You know what the other tube is. Did the tubing start coming out? Or is it just the wire? Just the wire so far. Let's see. Oh, that's what So you pulled the tubing through. Got the tubing through. I'm gonna need a little bit more slack there. Oops. All right, so 
put our little fitting on here. And that one will be routed down. Gonna need another piece of tubing. And scissors. And then the other one. Got to decide where we're going to run it. Now, ideally, you want it in a highly oxygenated place where there's a lot of current. This is my refugium, so my thought process is is to have it go into the inlet side of the refugium, so that any of the CO2 is distributed throughout the macroalgae. Most plants like CO2, so um, it's conceivable that the macro in here will do better because of the you know slightly higher pH content or the slightly higher CO2 levels. So, we're gonna route the other one. All right, so we finished uh, running our tubing. I've got my effluent line coming out in the back of the refugium. That'll give me plenty of space between the pump and the uh, tank for the CO2 to bleed off. It's time to go outside and hook up the reactor and hook up the pump. Oh boy. All right, so what you doing? All right, so we got the uh, reactors set up out here, um, at least positioned. Uh, we don't really have them plumbed yet. Um, first thing I want to do before I start putting lids and plumbing stuff up is fill them up with water. I've got plenty of extra salt water here. Um, and as opposed to bringing tank water and dropping my tank level that much and having to put new water in, might as well just fill these things up with water. I've got out here fresh made water. So have it fresh water or salt water? Salt. Freshly made salt water then. That's right. Nothing better, huh? Nothing better. Thirsty unit, eh? Yep, several gallons, I'm thinking. So did you rinse out that stuff? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I rinsed it all out uh, before I filled the reactors up. Get all the stuff out. Yeah, well, that crushed coral never does seem to get rinsed clean. No, yeah, and I, I put it in a uh, colander. Mm. So it uh, is very clean, or at least as best as I can get it. I'm rinsing it several times. But you're right, there's still some stuff in there. All between the two of them. All right, put that lid on. Now this, uh, pump here is going to get fed from a dosing pump there, so, or suck through. And in hindsight, I should have put a different fitting on here, a straight one. So Why? Because uh, of where the pump is located. Well, I still think you're going to end up rearranging that. In fact, my offer is still open to you to help you build a nice wooden bench inside there to uh, accommodate all that stuff. But for now. Yep, yeah, for now. I mean, I really wanted the shelf mostly for a place to set that thing. And the problem is if I start burying this stuff on under things, and it's going to get more difficult to maintain. And I also need space for spare pumps and stuff. And We should turn this room into what you were showing me, the picture of that guy on the Reef Central's the other night. Yeah, wishful thinking. He had more room behind his tank than he did in the tank. And this is the lid with the million and a half screws on it for the big reactor. Yeah, exactly. And then that black thing is where the probe goes in. Yep, we'll position our probe over that way. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, all those little holes, and there you go. Fun, fun, fun. And that's a union fitting that uh, connects that to the top. Yep. So you got yourself there a canister of uh, gravel, calcareous gravel, and um, uh, you're going to pass some water through it, and you're going to introduce some CO2, and that's going to um, cause that gravel to melt down or slowly break down, and ultimately that gets passed into the tank, huh? Absolutely, that's the plan. Or the theory. Many years I used to run calcium reactors on my tank, but it's been a lot of years since I did. All right, uh, be right back. I'll grab a pH probe.